Evening everyone. Happy Star Wars Day. May the 4th be with you all. Let's get Mike on. We're going to chat all about dentures today. Denture in we're going to go through everything that you want to know. Window impressions are in there. Hope you've all got the Star Wars t-shirts on. And uh, if you've got any questions at any point, just drop them into the chat, the normal stuff, or into the Q&A. Hey, Jazz, how you doing, buddy? You okay? Just requesting Mike to join now. And uh, we'll get cracking. I say, if anyone's not got their Star Wars t-shirts on, I'm going to be really upset. May the 4th be with you too, Jazz. I like it. I had to replace the uh, sticker on the, on the uh, Camden Houses on. Just waiting for Mike. Do, do, do. Hi, Ren. <laughs> Let's try and get Mike on. I've got a request. There we go. Do, do, do. There he is. Here we are. Here we are. We're here. How you doing, Mike? Let's see the t shirt. You got the t shirt? I'm, I'm dis <laughs> disappointed with the font, to be honest. It's not really <laughs> what I had in mind. <laughs> so I'll co I covered over the, the Camden Hells logo for you as well. I've got some stickers. We've got a sensible <laughs> mug here, though. Look at this in, in reverse. <laughs> Hey, we've got some good text on as well today. How are you doing? You well? Yeah, good, good. Thanks. Yeah, yeah. Easy day. Easy day. What are you up to? Uh, um, nothing much. I went, I did finish the setup this morning. Uh, ran it off go. to the lab. Um, well, it's going to be, it'll be uh, going public next week. Um, we'll be on. <laughs> uh, let's assume it works out okay. It's the guy who had the single Lurker 9 and I injected that impression material around. Remember that one? Syncox oh, one? it's a good one. Are we covering uh, that one later? So it might all go. No, we're not going to see that one later. So. <sighs> It might all go pear-shaped next Wednesday. So. <laughs> Ronnie, you'll have to see it after it's gone well. He's a massive gagger, and he's never worn dentures, so I never celebrate. Shiny lab work isn't the end of the story, is it? No, very true. You've got to wait for that review, haven't you? Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Perfect. Well, yeah. Great to have you on. Cheers for, cheers for coming on with us. Nice pleasure. Everything on pleasure. Techniques. Spread, got to spread, give... <laughs> spread the gospel. Spread the gospel. Do you want to just give everyone a little intro about yourself, background, and go from there? Oh, God, it goes back. It's a history lesson now, guys. 1973, <laughs> 1973 I left school. Uh, I used to love making model aircraft. And I didn't know what I wanted to do. My mother found a job for me, uh, our local dentist, our family dentist out of lab on the premises. And they got talking and the guy said, the dentist said, oh, you know, does he, he like making models? He loves it. So spend a day with my technician. So I spent a day in the lab on the premises back in the 70s. Um, and funnily enough, a guy was an apprentice with this guy already. So he'd been a year above me at school. So he just talked me through it. And he was just like, this is great. This is just what I want to do. So I ended up um, four years trained as a technician, which looking back, considering I only did four years at one term as a dentist, four years training to be a dental technician. Mm. That was a good grounding, you know, four years yeah. at the London and Whitechapel. Uh, and it was just magic. Just loved every minute of it. And then, then I spent three or four years in production labs, and then the students told me to do dentistry. So I was in the Crown Bridge lab at UCH. Mm -hmm. They said, why don't you become a dentist? So I went and did my A-levels. God, that was hard work. Uh, and eventually, <laughs> I spent eight years teaching the students while I was trawling through A-levels after, after work. And then I eventually got into Bristol University in 1988. Wow. Got out in 92. Um, fortunately for me, I got the prize for prosthetics, which has been really embarrassing. <laughs> no pressure. Um, 11 months later, they invited me back. So since November 93, I've been teaching at Bristol one day a wow. week. Oh, amazing. And, and of December this year, I decided to do another day a week because they've got no staff. I think some of our guys, I've seen some of these names flicking up down here. They've got some current students from Bristol on there. Um, so I've been doing two days a week since Christmas. And I do one day a week in practice. Just doing prosthetics. It's just so practice. Uh, so practice limited to removable pros. Uh, it wasn't until until lockdown last year, and they when did they open the practices up? But June, June. July last year. Mm -hmm. They said come and get fit tested. So I went and got fit tested. So I shaved my beard off. <laughs> I, I got fit tested. I got Nick for speeding coming back, which didn't impress me much. <laughs> you know, 
I did two AGPs and thought, sod this. I'm not, I'm not doing any more AGP. So <laughs> that was it. From I don't think you'd have been year. alone in that. I don't think you'd have been alone no. at all in that. But I'm just lucky that I could stick to it. So I've done no non-AGP dentistry ever since. So the university mm. doesn't require me to do it. And I told Bristol University, if they make me do stuff I don't want to do, I'm going to leave. So, you know, <laughs> I've got it made, really, haven't I? My you sort it. The principal doesn't want me to leave. My practice um, doesn't want me to leave. Uh, and that university, I don't think, wants me to leave. So I'll have to commit some heinous crime to be thrown out and stop doing it. <laughs> so until then, I can keep posting stuff on Instagram, which That's seems to have proved a bit of a hit. So I must Yeah, it, it, it does look like we've got a few of the students on today. So that's awesome. Um, I know a lot of people obviously be keen to, to go through it. So the first thing, and I, this is actually something I think that you cover the best, is um, adapting stock trays. So I know you've got a few cases to share, but do you want to give a little run through of your thought process behind it, why we need to be adapting stock trays? I know you were on the, the BDSA live that I did last week about um, you know, building an impression rather than taking one. Yeah, I love that term. Uh, love that term. It's great. I know you sort of got the same thing. Ah, oh, it's, it's all mine. It's all yours. <laughs> I, don't, I, don't know, I don't know about that. But, um, but yeah, so just give us a little run through that. And I know you've got some pictures you want to show us. Well, the, the weird thing is I don't remember as a student or what the turning point was. But I remember as a student, there was two things that were massive unknown to me. One was taking radiographs. Have I got the apex or even the bloody tooth on the film? Uh, we didn't have beam aiming devices in my day. It was only in the early 90s. And... The other one was taking an alginate, and you'd, you'd, people probably do it now. You'd, you'd put alginate in the tray, you'd stick it in the mouth, and you'd sit there with your fingers crossed metaphorically behind your back, hoping it was going to come out okay. And you'd pull it out of the mouth and thinking, it's a bit crap, but maybe the supervisor will say it's okay. So you'd show it to them thinking, oh, just please tell me it's all right. <laughs> you remember that, don't you? Is, is anybody in here tonight not had that experience? <laughs> you all did it. So, Not even sure what you're looking at when you look at it, when it comes out of the mouth. Looking, I mean, the, the worst thing for me was I know what I needed to take an impression of. 15 mm -hmm. years as a technician, moaning about dentist impressions. <laughs> and then you think, God, it's not that easy, is it? You realise yeah. it's not that easy. Um, and then I don't, I don't know what happened then. How did I actually start to think? How can I change it? And the bottom line, it's the predictability. Mm -hmm. And over the years, I, I used to look at the impressions as a technician and think, oh, bloody useless dentists, can't they do better than that? And then the penny drops one day, you're thinking, that's the best they can do. They don't deliberately send rubbish to the lab. They take the best impression they can with the knowledge they've got. Mm -hmm. And then it made me think, if they weren't taught the techniques I try and teach, how are you ever going to get it right? So my philosophy is, you know, is you, you say you build an impression. And you can't just take a tray out the drawer. And our nurses have told me this over the years. Dentists they work with, they take a tray out the drawer, they spray fix on it and load it with algae. It doesn't even go near the mouth until it's full of algae. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm thinking, this is just not going to work, is it? Uh, and then you realise that, you know, trays, I've twigged now that the stock trays are made by manufacturers to fit nobody properly. <laughs> So if you start with the premise, this tray will not fit the patient in my chair until I do something with it, you've got to do something with it. And alginate mm -hmm. is not going to work. So I, run, I, I, I produced this little slideshow the, the other night thinking, you know, can we just show people the, the way I see things? So I'll just talk you through the first few pictures. So what we got here is a, I, sh I shouldn't say this, but this is not an, un, not an untypical impression from a lab. So... I used to go into my lab and just take pictures of what was on the plaster bench. Uh, that was a fairly standard alginate. And you're thinking, oh, it's not great. But I think as a dentist, you see the impression, you're thinking, I can't picture the model, but the lab never tell me how rubbish the impressions are. So I'll, I'll send it off. And if they keep sending stuff back, you're thinking it's probably OK. okay. So if we, I think if we saw the models, you may think, oh, my God. So that's the impression. That's the model. And if you look at that, thinking great lingual freedom, the lingual gingival margin is beautiful. Beyond that, there's not a busting lot showing, is there? Mm -hmm. um, so, but, the, you know, what do they know? And the next one was even better. This, this, there's a, an outreach um, hospital outside Bristol where the final year students go. And one of the consultants found this impression in the outbox to go to the lab. Um, it's not beautiful, is it? Um, um, so, but it's not one of your students, getting, though, is it? 
No, it's not one. If it was, <laughs> I don't want to ever speak to them again. <laughs> a great pressure of the lip. I think you can see a lovely indentation. Can we sit? This is this is a lip. Okay, there's no, there's 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 a hint of a molar up here somewhere. The half the palette's gone somewhere. You know, where is it all? And this is the problem. A stock tray will fit nobody. Um, so um, I said to the so this photograph is sent to me on a Thursday or Friday night, and the guy said, "Look at this." So I rushed into the lab Monday morning. I said, can I get that impression, the model of that impression, before you work your magic on it? So Lucy, the head technician, said, yeah, there it is. So this is the model from the impression. Look at that, guys. Can you just see the full horror of that impression? <laughs> now, again, this wasn't done deliberately, I don't think. Um, but look at the view from the buckle aspect. Look at that. Can you see there's absolutely no buckle sulcus? We've got an eclipsed molar up there, haven't we? Um, and there's another view here, both the models. So there we go. This is, this is the technician. That's what they've done to the models. Can you see you've got a buckle sulcus? So the technician said to me, if I hadn't been a technician, I could have been a, a stonemason. So the technician there has made a buckle sulcus and they created a molar for them. This is what the technicians do for us. So I think if the technicians sent their models back, I wouldn't have half the battle I'm having trying to convince people to modify your stock trays. So that's a little true story. So what I've got now is a picture. This is a stock tray on a model. So this is one of my impressions. You can see the stock tray here, massive gap under here. Sulcus is short everywhere. And this one, sulcus is short everywhere. Now you're not gonna get into the sulcus reliably. Reliably is the word, unless you actually mm -hmm. do something with these trays. So, I don't know why this picture is so big. So basically, if you don't modify your trays, and what are we up against? There's another view here. Who hasn't caught the lip under a lower impression or an upper impression? The lip, you let go of that lip, it's just going to flip under there. All your labial sulcus has gone out the window. And why is it all a struggle? That's what I tell you. Look, you've got here, this is the soft tissues. Everything in the way, and you can't fight. Who's not done a filling and can't get the tongue out of the way? You just want to get the tongue out of the way, and that tongue is bigger and stronger than any alginate you shove in the patient's mouth. You're never going to win the battle, which is what people try and do. Mm -hmm. So I've got this protocol, simple. Remember Kennedy's classification? We all talk, we're all taught that. God knows why we learn it, but we learn it, don't we? <laughs> so I've done this little graphic here. The saddles are where you put something to push the tissues out of the way. So there's a Kennedy class one lower. Everybody's a miserable case. Who wants to make a letter lower for somebody with two, two freehand saddles? Nobody in their right mind. <laughs> and by actual free and sales on the upper, where the hell are your buckle sulcus going to come from? If you've got a box tray, you're going to struggle. So the bottom line is you can't do it. And there's the lower, uh, sorry, the, uh, the upper, different ones. Free and, you need actual free and saddle. So on that. So if we don't fill the massive areas where the trays are nowhere near the tissues, the tissues are just going to shove you out of the way. Who wants to take an impression twice? Nobody. Who wants to take a crap impression? Absolutely nobody. Who wants to send a rubbish <laughs> impression to a technician? And I've sat in a lab. And if you sit in a lab, you take that impression out of the bag, and you shout to the other technicians, look at this rubbish. Do you, do you want to be that person? Surely you don't want to be that person, do you? You can't be. So bottom line is, yeah, you've got to work out what you're going to do. So anyway, this, this is a big hit tonight. This is what people want to see, isn't it? Oh, yeah. This the old is window the impression. <laughs> So this, this lady self-referred. A lot of people might have seen this, but we're going to show you again. So. There you go. The dreaded flabby rich. You know what's under there, people? You know what's under there? That's just bouncing around. So you're up against that there. So what are you going to do? Now, I used to do what a lot of people do. Everybody's loves, I think everybody wants to teach the window technique, don't they? Would you agree with that, Rupert? The window yeah, technique. Everyone, everyone wants the window technique. Probably the window technique, I don't think it works. I used to do it, and I've got some quite nice impressions. The impressions look pretty, but the impressions aren't, I don't think they're what we want. So, primary impressions, I used to make a fuss about this, trying to scoop a bit out the tray. Don't worry about it. So that's what I do for primary impressions. I pick a tray about the same. I just love these shot lander trays. You can try these for 
These are free from Shopland. I'll give you two of these trays for nothing. If you ask Shoplander nicely, I keep saying this to people. I don't think they get inundated now. And I'm saying, I'll stop sending people for free trays for goodness <laughs> sake, guys. I can't keep up. But they are lovely. John Bestwood designed these and they've got a central finger rest. The lowers have got finger stops halfway down the ridges. They're just lovely things. So, Flabby Ridge. You know what the Flabby Ridge looks like. You don't need to see a Flabby Ridge. You can see the dentures moving. So my technique, somebody said I shouldn't call it my technique, but you know, ways to skin a cat. If you've got another way of doing it, do it. So guess what I use for my primary people? It doesn't matter. I don't worry anymore about displacing the ridge on the primary. I just want full extension, um, complete extension. Now I'm guessing you can do this with putty. Mm -hmm. As you know, I just go for impression compound because it's easy to use. Um, so just fill, it, fill a tray with impression compound and just stick it in the mouth. Just push, push. It doesn't matter if you can displace the ridge because the technique is going to uh, stop you pushing the ridge for the second impression anyway. So don't worry about ridge displacement. Just get full arch extension, get everything you need. Uh, and then it's just going to be easier for you to take the definitive impression. So, and then just take alginate wash. Just alginate, anybody can do an alginate wash. So basically fill it up. I might have green stick that a bit at the back. I don't think I needed to. It's just easy, easy later to treat. So alginate wash, fine. Now the problem I've got here is, you know, I pour my own models. I don't suppose any, have you got a lab on the premises? No, 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 I'll send it away. Um, well, we do, we do have one, but I don't, I don't, we can cast up for certain things for when we do um, like the teeth in the day kind of stuff, but I don't, I just send mine away. Mm. So the problem you got with the flabby ridges, it's, it's a job to convey to the lab without the model exactly what tissues are displaced and what aren't. Mm -hmm. So if you can't do it, I'd say, you know, outline the, 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 you can draw a line on the impression if you want. I think that's really difficult to do. I never do that. But then, you know, a technician always, once a technician, always a technician, always pull my own impressions. So I can outline on the cast where the tissues are displaceable and say to the lab, make a tray for me. Now, this is where I differ from most. And this is the way I differ from what I used to do probably 10 years ago. Because I think the labial sulcus is almost part of the flabby ridge. Mm -hmm. So if the ridge is moving, the labial sulcus is moving. So if you make a window tray, you're almost imposing on the labial sulcus where it's going to go by the tray pushing on that. So I came to the conclusion, this was a conversation with John Bestwood, that, that why, why do we do that? So I do this. Mm. So is that a window? I don't know, what would you call that? It's not really a window tray, is it? It's, a, it's like a deficient tray. It's just a cut, <laughs> cutaway tray. Call it a cutaway tray. So you, you've got no handle now. Um, it doesn't matter. Just a finger rest in the middle because that's where the pressure's going. You can see I've drawn on this cast where the, where the um, flabby ridge is. So I guess you could ask the lab to send you, I haven't thought of this before, you can ask them to send a photograph back to you and you could outline on the photo where the tissues are displaceable and then send it back to them. They can translate that to the model. Would that work? I guess it would work, wouldn't it? Yeah, I, I send a, I, I would draw it on the, on the actual annotation like you would do like Chrome design, but uh, I'd all, I also do a photo or even sometimes yeah. just do a, a video as well. So I'll do mm -hmm. an intro or photo in the mirror and you can draw it on um, or just do a, a video. Literally, if you can see how much it's displaceable as well and where it is, then that's that's quite a good way of yeah. doing it. Anyway, so so we get that far. Um, so and you basically try it in the mouth and just make sure it's clear of the tissue. So if you've got any areas where it's still touching, you just take a bird and trim a bit more off. So this is coming back. Try it in the mouth, and you can see the labial sulcus is, is, is completely passive now. The critical thing with this, you can just about make out on the photograph here, we've got a lip retractor. These U-shaped mm -hmm. lip retractors, mm -hmm. you just want to passively push the soft tissues out of the way. You can't use your fingers. I don't want to use a tray to push the tissues out of the way, so we just gently retract the lip. There's two sizes of these. One of them fit people. Um, so, that, so you've got a completely passive ridge there. And then um, I green stick the tray the way I always would. So back edge first. And get the vocal sulcus with width as well as the depth correct just with green stick now my guess is you could probably do that with silicon if you're handy with it um i'm dying to have a go with this this video we saw this guy in is it the states who's injecting um out of a syringe green stick mm -hmm. um i just fancy having to go at that but this this so <laughs> i've got to get something to warm it up enough yeah i'm, I'm gc are going to send me some samples okay so I'm going to try it up with GC. Um, my guess is, you saw the video, didn't you send it to me? Or did they, I don't know how he gets the stuff in the syringe when he cuts into little bits or? 
yeah that's it, it in. but i'm going to give that a go so I'll, I'll update everybody if that works so the bottom line is um zinc i just love zinc oxide you must have been taught zinc oxide loads of people think taught zinc oxide um still use it at bristol so zinc oxide the whole thing interesting look where the post am is the old post am way too far forward mm -hmm. now this is interesting because technicians see that indent on the primary cast and quite often unless you've told them otherwise they will send you a lovely special tray 100 sure. extended by <laughs> millimeters as short as the old one so you've got to tell them please don't follow the old indent otherwise your tray comes back too small your rims come back too small your try and come back too small your indenture comes back and the whole thing's unretentive so if you see the indent and you think it's in the wrong place i think the mistake a lot of people make is they see that indent and they assume the patient was a gagger. So they follow that forevermore. If the patient doesn't gag at examination, the patient doesn't gag on the primaries, and the patient doesn't gag on the secondaries, you don't need to understand the palate, do you? So bottom line, the lesson learned from that is don't go by the indent in the palate and just make sure your technician doesn't. If you're worried they're going to do it, get an indelible pencil, mark it on the impression when you send it back, because then it should come out of the model. If it's indelible pencil, once you've disinfected your impression, you've got to contaminate the pencil. Just indelible pencil, draw on the impression where you want the extension to. Um, and you might not be so disappointed. So try that in the mouth. Now, at this point, this lady was really nice. I, I don't know about you. I don't like videoing patients when I'm treating them. When you're manipulating tissues, it's just not a nice thing to do. But you can do it with a student. <laughs> <laughs> so... It, it, <laughs> This is a current final year student at Bristol, bless her. He was caught doing nothing one day and volunteered to sh let me show. So th this video doubles up as flabby ridge technique and loose teeth technique. So bless her. Um, she said, that's all right, you, know, you, can, you can video me. I'll be a dummy patient. So the bottom line here is you have to picture this as a patient with a flabby ridge now, okay? Mm -hmm. And you have to picture my fat fingers as the lip retractor, which is then passive to the upper lip, okay? At Bristol, a you know, a, a forefront of universities doesn't have the lip retractors we want. Apparently, we've nicked some from Ortho now, so now we've got some. But the point we didn't have the, this video is probably maybe eighteen months old. This is obviously pre-COVID, so this is this can't have been twenty twenty, can it? Because mm. so this must have been twenty nineteen we videoed this. So bless that, this is our victim. So this is to show you how you. So imagine you've got the the tray in the mouth, the zinc oxide. You checked it, you reseated it in the mouth. Um, it sits there passively. And you can put gentle finger pressure in the palate if you want. And this is how you actually take a passive impression. So we've got, this is done in two stages. The second video is really distorted for some weird reason. So let's play this. So this is light bodied silicon being injected round. Imagine the teeth aren't there, injected round the ridge. So um, light bodied silicon. And we literally just, now the, if the lip retractor's in, you can squirt this right into the sulcus passively. So you're not displacing the ridge at all or the lip. So it's really easy. literally all you do is just squirt this on the on the flabby ridge. Um, on this situation, we're doing it um, flabby ridge case. You want to put a, uh, silicon adhesive around the periphery of the of the um, cutaway. Okay. Your assistant's okay. then got another gun loaded already, so you have got one in each holster. You flip the other one out, and you've got <laughs> bite registration material. So this is the next video. Now, this is distorted hideously. I don't really know why. Anyway, let's, uh, this, this, is, this is going straight on top of the unset silicon. Again, fingers don't work for this, but, you know, bless her. You know, the patient's great, isn't she? She's not twitching. She's laying there. Cheek retractors in. Got a camera on the end of her nose. So you just layer that over the top. And the point of this is the silicon is non-displacing and it's picking up the fine detail. And if you passively put the bite registration this is um what is this this is the dreaded, yeah, spot looks a bit a hydrobite yeah we know what mm. to think about this stuff but this is for this material <laughs> it's brilliant zermac works i use the zermac in practice brilliant the, the ultra fast up. yeah it sets really rigidly nice and yeah. solid and then when you take it out of the mouth in one piece you get this beauty so you can see picture on the left you've got i think this is zermac um you can see the mid colored is the light body uh, mm -hmm. And you can see, but you can see the labial sulcus there. It's just what you want is a wafer thin, almost a knife edge labial sulcus impression. So completely non-displaced. Um, so that's my that's my take, and I wouldn't do it any other way now because I think that's easy in the window tray. So mm -hmm. your thoughts, Rupert? So I I do. Or anybody window. else? 
I do. Yeah, if anyone's got questions or anything, please pop them in. Uh, so I do a window tray, um, just because that's what I was I was taught and that's what I've done, but I'm going to give yours a go now. Um, I think the key thing with Flabby Ridge is you've got to step back and look at why you need to do it. So it's about uneven support. So that anterior fibrous ridge is not as supportive as the posterior areas or the non-flabby ridges. So if you've got a uniform pressure, it's going to press and that video is really, really good, particularly in the lateral excursion is really good at seeing that tilting. So the whole principle is you've got your compressive at the end, you're using Zoe. I would use, I would use silicons in that. So then you're pressing against that. And then as you say, you're then putting with no pressure on and non-distorted. So the final denture when it presses is not going to put, put pressure on. So i would be doing it in putty. I would do it the exact same way similar to what you've done, you did it the exact same way you do a complete and then you free up your area, scalpel it out. Um, but then I would just use light body again, the exact same light body into the, into the window area, seating it right up. Um, I'm going to get a separate color just to uh, separate color of light body. So it looks better for, uh, I'm doing a case soon. Um, but no, I think pretty much the same thing. My only difference, I've got the tiniest little lingual bar, but if I had a case where it was, wrapping around more into the labial sulcus than absolutely i think yeah. freeing it up completely is makes complete sense yeah my, my worry with the la labial bar bit is if it's in the wrong place yeah. like say you, you want a bigger frenal notch you've got you've actually got nothing to trim so mm -hmm. i don't mm -hmm. worry about it anymore i think a lot there's nothing in my way the whole thing is completely passive so it's a lot of sort of thing of thinking why didn't i think of this decades ago but you don't do somebody you have a conversation with somebody and say what about this like, that's magic let's just do it so yeah yeah just a couple of questions on that um what is the ratio on your zoe that you're doing at the back there uh well it just comes out the tube 50 50 you know same by volume fine so, fine about the length, of, about the length of your little finger per per um, standard size impression. I would have said. Um, in the in the winter, actually, if you warm it up, it's way better. It's sometimes the nurses will find it really difficult to mix the stuff. Put it in a bowl of warm water, just to take the temperature up a bit, and then it mixes really easily. But yeah, did somebody talk about using impression plaster there? Oh God. That's yeah, it. someone just asked. I heard about a technique where we paint plaster of Paris or impression plaster layers onto the flabby flabby tissue and use that as an impression material. That's proper old school, yeah. Um, mm. I remember pouring those up as a technician, actually. You used to have to paint a separator on them. Otherwise, you pour it. Think about it. You've got a plaster model pour against the plaster impression. It's never going to come apart. So you used to paint a separator. And apparently the plaster of Paris for impressions had starch in it. Mm -hmm. Have you ever seen this stuff? So you'd pour hot water on it. It would expand and just float. It's lovely. I only did it once, but, um, yeah, that's old school. I think with modern materials, some of the modern materials work in prosthetics. Silicon in the replacement of the plaster of Paris, I think, is fine. Apparently, you used to mix it up. It was a hell of a skilled job. You'd mix it and you'd paint it on with a paintbrush and just layer it up, which is effectively what we're doing with the, the, the silicon, various grades of silicon. So, Yeah, so that, that's, that's why I just use silicon there. And, and you, depending on how much pressure I want to put on the tissues, I use a different viscosity of, of silicon. The, the Kultzer uh, Flexi Tie ones are great because you've got gun loaded putty compound like literally you've got like gun loaded different thicknesses for everything which is awesome uh cass butters just asked how about additional spacing in an anterior fibrous area with perforations for a mildly flabby ridge i like that question yeah i, I would put massive perforations and i would probably having done that for the first time how massive like a window or no i would just make big holes in it <laughs> i would make big holes in it and i would do having never done it before i would do what i did with that guy the other day with the single lurker nine Mm -hmm. I would probably inject through the through the windows through one of the holes and let the excess come out and maybe mm -hmm. maybe try that. Uh, mm -hmm. Otherwise, yeah, big holes, big holes, and let the excess flow through. Yeah, because you you just want to have pressure everywhere that's got good support, and then yeah. no pressure. No pressure anterior. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, or if it's, a, it's a, if it's a very sp s small fibrous so you could just cut a window through at the top then, couldn't you? Yeah. If, it, if so, it cuts the labial bit, I wouldn't worry then too much. So with your building you're building your primary impression and your stock trays and things. You've done green stick there posteriorly. So for like your lower, your favorite lower bilateral free and saddle, what's yeah. your alterations that you're doing for your trays there? Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm using silicon. We're out syncing my slides now, mate. We're out syncing my what's slides the next now. slide? Go on, what's the next slide? Let's do the slides. <laughs> well, this, this, is, this is a variation on this, this guy we saw 
I made a short video. This is a single upper canine guy. So yeah, these, really um, good. Can I, show, can, I show you, can I show you a model that my technician gave me the other day? I've got to find where the camera is. Um, look at that model, guys. This, this poor dentist, a few years ago, I had down the dentist. One lower, what's that, a premolar? In the way of everything else. So they've got no detail. Goodness knows how far out that lip went. Can you imagine how far out the lip went to get that impression? <laughs> so, so that's real life. This is real life on the screen now. If you get single teeth, it's just trays don't fit. They do this, this, this technique I probably learned five or six years ago. That's all just so easy. Just bang a hole in it. Uh, and then you've got a stock tray that fits. Look at the way that fits, fits the whole mouth now because that canine's not in the way. Building and this, is, this is an edentulous stock tray. Edentulous stock. I used to do dentate stock trays. If the ridges are massive, but they mm -hmm. really are. Yeah. And then I, and I thought, one day, why the hell am I not using edentulous? If they're near the midline, you lose the handle. But again, with a shot lander trays, you've got other things to grab hold of. Mm -hmm. um, so just because people want to see how I did this, and these are really quick videos. So this is me trying to the tray in the guy's mouth. This is a different patient, by the way, the same thing. The stock edentulous tray. Just check to see yeah. if it fits and work out where the tooth pokes through the tray. And then you just get a, a hole in the tray. Mother of all birds. <laughs> I got lucky here, by the way. This was all done live. <laughs> the guy said, fine. In the, in the interest of education, I don't mind if you do it. And it just worked, and it just went straight back over. You can see that I think all the videos are on my Instagram, aren't they? I think I did the whole series. Yeah, it's so. a really good post, this one, guys. So make sure you check this yeah. one out, because it's a really good technique. Uh, and it's worked a treat. Um, and then, that's it. Just fill it. With, so you can see the, the, the video of this being done is, is on my Instagram. So that's what it looks like. So you can see we've got, you can see, just about to see the green stick shows on there, doesn't it? The anterior bit. That's been green stick to get the sulcal depth. I had a bit of a gap there. And I'm, personally, I would never get it right in one go with impression compound. I can't do it. So you know, what stages not... have you done here? Have you done borders? The first bit was compound. First bit of compound, fill the tray, shove it over the tooth. Now, if you've got Fine. undercut teeth, the nice thing with, with green impression compound, you can just jiggle it out the mouth, in and out the mouth. So you can pull it out a bit, push it back in a bit. So you know mm -hmm. it's not locked into the undercuts. Because it's the impression compound, you put it in, you pull it out within 20 seconds, it's back out the mouth. There's no set time to worry about. And then you, you look at it and thinking, oh, there's deficiencies on that. I need to fill in the gaps. So I just get some green stick and you say, I'm going to make some more videos on green sticking, I think. It's, I think people find it a bit intimidating. I just don't think it, yeah. it's easier than it looks when it's a still image. So I think if I make some videos just to prove it's not, it's not witchcraft. People might still think it's witchcraft. So and this the is the lower one I did. This is the lower one we did. Now this is the guy I think videoed I did the stills mm -hmm. of this, didn't I? Mm -hmm. When you've got a small tooth, when you've got a big tooth, you can shove your finger in the impression compound to open the hole up. If you've got a small tooth, just a mirror handle and just, just coax it around to make a space for the alginate to wrap around the tooth. So you've taken out of the mouth. Take it out of the mouth while it's still relatively re soft. Or reheating it and then... Well, no, to, to be honest, it comes out of the mouth. It's not, it's not cold. It's literally yeah. in the mouth for a few seconds. So I take it out. Mm -hmm. I'll actually just shove, a, shove an instrument near all my finger, if it's a premolar or a molar, open it up a bit, then I just push it back in to make sure it's okay. So that's easy. Um, and then you're gonna have to refine that slightly. So uh, it, lingual sulcus is the bane of everybody's life, isn't it? The tongue will always get in the way. It's just like, oh, for goodness sake, tongue, just move and it won't. So to get the lingual sulcus, I do one side at a time. So when you're doing the lingual bits like this, I'm going to tell the patient, I'll actually put some green stick on the edge of the tray and I'm going to say to the patient, I'm going to shove my finger almost down your throat there. And I then push the green stick to displace the tongue, then get them to raise their tongue. So you've, mm -hmm. you've coaxed it beyond mile hide line. Then they raise their tongue and they just pull it back to the lingual sulcus, the, the functional sulcal depth. Fine. So again, if you do one side at a time, you've got a bit more control. Um, and then just take an alginate. Because um, mm -hmm. we know how good alginate is at picking up all the detail. You can see lingual, so this, this takes me well, 10 minutes to do that impression. Mm -hmm. the, joy of, the joy of the thermoplastics is you haven't got to wait for the stuff to set. And if it's not the, quite the right shape, you chuck it back in the, in the hot water for a minute. I nearly said water bath, but I won't because people haven't got them. Stick it in back in some warm water for a minute and just stick it back in the mouth. It's yeah, so, so you've, quick. you've built that impression. That's the thing, you've built that yeah, impression. Yeah, So you get the tray, make a hole in the tray, which obviously I started with. Then you fill in the gaps with impression compound because you know you're going to push the tissues out the way. The bottom line is you can't push tissues out the way with alginate. 
you're not going to do it. Aljanek's going to win nine times out of ten. Aljanek will just shove you back, and you think, oh, I just don't want to do that. So, yeah. So you can see we've got refinement. We've got a green stick in the saddles at the back here and here, just to refine mm -hmm. the lingual sulcus. Then an Aljanek wash. And the bottom line is never forget your over. You, if your primaries are good, they're going to be overextended. Mm -hmm. Overextension mm -hmm. is the target. But then you can't use your trays out the bag because they'll be big. Just remind that's what the upper looked like. Very nice. And why, why, why are there no bubbles, guys? Because you run it under the tap. Just under the tap before it goes in the mouth. It just glazes it. And I don't want to do impressions twice. The patient doesn't want it done twice. And Jess never, my Jess never moans about anything. And she would mm -hmm. do it again. But I just feel an idiot. If I haven't got it right in one go, you're thinking... And they're paying to see you thinking, well, you're supposed to be good at this. So you know, I don't get it wrong. Now, if I modify the trays, if I build an impression from it, I'm going to keep using your term, Rick, but if you build an impression from scratch. <laughs> no, Rick, Rick's like it. Rick Brown's liking it as well. He must have been one of yours it? at Bristol. He was Building actually, the impression. He's, he's been gone a long time now. Yeah? <laughs> <laughs> he's quite grown up. I still remember him. Show, it, show your age, up. Rick. <laughs> I've been there a long time. So bottom line, that is, that's, that's just what you end up with. Um, that's lovely set of impressions. See, for something like that, I'm put. I'm doing a. I'm doing a, a dentate tray and absolutely packing it full of putty. So I'm going to get. I'm going to give this a go because this that makes just so much more sense. It does. All you got to do is make sure you've got a lot of clearance, so that tooth can just <laughs> just drop through the hole. You want a big, bigger, way bigger window than you've got tooth. So the impression tool needs to come through the hole and form like a top hat over it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Otherwise, you'll have issues. Can I just fly through a quick upper just to, just to show through. you guys how easy it is? So this case is... Can we I'm zoom out a tiny bit? Sorry? Can we zoom out a tiny bit? Oh, sorry. This lady... Yeah, this lady's had a clearance now. Mm -hmm. Okay, so... Um, and then, so what do we do? So what am I going to do, first of all, guys? We're going to put compound in the dentulous areas. Then you're going to refine the shape with the, with the green stick to get the buccal sulcus posteriorly. And then you're going to do the label bit with wax. So I always use for anything that's got more than one tooth left. I'm always going to use compound. I'm always going to refine the shape with green stick. And I'm always going to box the anterior sections where the teeth are still standing with um, wax to get full sulcus depth. And I want to push the lips out the way with the wax. And then all you've got to do is just fill it with alginate. Again, these are only one go. I, I used to look at pictures like this thinking, these smart asses, I can't do that. And you can do it. And again, look at that, that posterior border. See, we've got it wrong. This is, this is, you're not careful. The technician's got to follow that again. Mm. You know, I used, to, I used to be in awe of impressions like this. I'm not clever. I'm just a normal dentist who, who's too embarrassed or would be if I sent impressions to a lab to send rubbish <laughs> impressions. So basically take impressions and see what you got. Mm. Um, yeah, so that's it. And this, this, I'm just going to fly through. Then I'm going to stop. Okay, so this is a lower bilateral. Free. I'm crap at photographs of lowers, by the way. Any tips? How do you get the tongue out of the way, for goodness sake? So here we go. You know the routine now, guys. So this is red compound. If you want to do photographs, impression club guys, red compound's better because it photographs better. It contrasts. <laughs> okay. I'm going to be purples. I'm sorry. I don't get purple impression compound unless we can commission some. And you can imagine what you're going to get. Get your friends there. at Shopland to sort you out. Yeah. Anyway, so there we go. So that's it on everything bar the loose teeth. Do you want to do loose teeth before we finish? Let's do loose teeth. We've got, do do we've still got 20 minutes. We've got loads of time. And nobody's going to have any questions at the end, are they? <laughs> <laughs> right, loose teeth. Loose teeth. So is this the case that you shared recently? Or is this a different one? I don't know. I, the, I really... the clearance case. Yeah, this was from two years ago. Oh, no, no. Uh, this, okay. oh, the lady with two upper centrals. No, this is mm. a different one. Okay, this, is, cool. this is a different one. So, so, have we all seen a case like this? It's bad enough in, in still, but in, vi in all glory vi glorious video. It's like a piano. Yes, look at that. Oh, it reminds me of fronds of uh, seaweed. You know, when the waves are coming in and out in the dock <laughs> and the waves are going backwards and forwards. So what do you do with somebody like that? Um, it used to terrify me. I used to use mm. Vaseline. Yeah. Um, yeah. X-ray X-ray films, the lead foils over the top. Okay. That would work quite well. Or, or um, I used to use gauze as well. I used to wrap the teeth smeared in Vaseline and sort of cloak the teeth with, with Vaseline gauze to form like a cover over the top. 
And I'm thinking, no, you don't want to do that. You don't want to do that. So basically here we've got now, so what do you do then? Is you're going to adapt a tray. Again, you're building the impression. You start from scratch. You've got to make a tray fit. You might recognize this student in a minute. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Issues again. So you've got five teeth at the front. You need to create a window so the tray's exposing the teeth. So big burr. So our patient on the right has now got six mobile anterior teeth instead of a flabby ridge, okay? So. Just literally just, I like these poly trays. They're quite nice. They're, they, they're these are the trays that I use. I know you, you asked the other night on uh, on the BDSA Live, these are the trays that I mostly use. Now you know what they are. <laughs> now I know <laughs> the what they're called. Poly trays. <laughs> so create a window, okay? So this 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 is this, this. her teeth are quite sound actually, you'd be pleased to know. So I'm putting some wax in the palette. Again, you, you've got to fill in the gaps. That to prove you don't need impression compound all the time, I did this in wax. For those at home, Okay, seat the tray. Now, at the moment, this window is supposed to show you. I think you can see it, yeah. So we've now got the palate, the palatal voids fill, full up. So then you're going to go put the tray back in the mouth. So you can see now, make sure the window exposes. Now you can see it in the upper right three, I'd have probably hacked a bit more off it. I want to see it the whole labial segment of the tray. Okay. Do you get edentious, uh, poly trays for edentious patients? No, short lander ones. Okay, so clear that, clear the whole, the whole area. You then, guess what I'm gonna put in the palette for the, this is the, this is the patient case now, this is the real one. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now, I don't know about you, but if I can take this impression once without pulling the teeth out, I'm quitting while I'm ahead. So there's no way <laughs> in cases like this, I'm gonna do this twice. Yeah. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna build this in one go. So, Impression compound in the palette. And of course, it's a bit clearance. You're going to remake this in six months anyway. So refine the posterior buckle segment with, with green stick. Um, again, you could do it with putty and probably with, with silicon. You're a better man than me, Rupert, to answer those questions because that's what you do. I'd be you doing then, putty, yeah. yeah. You then, uh, if ever you see is wax. Wax, I don't know about you guys, but trying to get wax between periodontally involved teeth, it's just a pain in the bum. They just, the wax moves. You shove the tray in the mouth, it's moved, it won't stick, it sticks to your fingers, you turn your back, it's fallen out. Light bodied silicons, put your thumb or your finger behind the teeth, inject between the teeth, and it sets. Then the whole thing's linked, it's never going to move. So it just stays there, which is great. Um, so we've got um, impression compound in the back, green stick in the back, we've got um, blocked out the undercuts. In the case of the lateral, in this case, anybody who's got teeth like this, always put local anaesthetic in. Put local anaesthetic in just in case. So if you're pulling your pressure out of the mouth, the patient's rolling their eyes, you're not going to get a hypodermic needle past anything. You're stuck. So anything that's loose, just numb them up. That lateral stayed put, um, I was pleased to know. So this is, this is the same long-suffering student, bless her. So now we're going to... So this is how I do... So you imagine now this is the patient, this compound green stick, um, and the undercuts are blocked out. So now we're going to run the video. So this has been run under tap, by the way, guys. You make that assumption yet? Slide this in. Patient's numb. This patient was phobic. She was really good about this. Not that the student, the, the real patient, let me do the still shots. So mm -hmm. while the alternate soft, if you make that out, you literally just wipe it away with your finger. The tray, you know, so keep the finger on the tray to hold the tray in the same place all the time. Mm -hmm. Just wipe the impression tool away so you've got, now the teeth aren't moving at this point because you've got impression compound on the inside and to a point the, the silicon's semi-bracing them as well. So all you've got to do is that. And then you do the two-stage silicon. So we'll go back to, so that's what it looked like in the mouth. You can imagine these soft tissues are a tiny bit friable. It didn't take much to make them bleed. So all I did then was, you can imagine, we do the same lip retractor. The lip retractor is still up here, you can see. Um, light body silicon around the teeth. Um, and then this this is whatever we had in the, um, oh, this is Zermac again. The hospital, we use Blue Moose. In, in practice, we use Zermac, same thing, same result. Um, and then when you've done the border molding, which you would do because it's, um, you want to get the full circle depth. So you border mold, and I think this video will show is this show? Yeah, so border mould. Again, if you had the lip retractor and you, you'd have got it further in the sulcus. Those lip retractors are easy enough to buy. I think we bought two, two 14 pound a pair on Amazon. So you push it in the sulcus, let it set. 
Now, at this point, you don't want to use adhesive. You, want to, you don't want this to stick to the tray. Mm -hmm. Because what you want to do is take it out as two parts. So you pull the impression out of the mouth, which is easy to do because there's no suction created because you haven't created a seal anywhere. It literally comes out really easily. Believe, believe me, it does. Um, and then the anterior section is, is then separate. For the anterior bit here, have you taken out, before you've done your light body, have you taken out your first bit of light body, the bracing? No, I left, left it there, left it there. You've left it in, it's going to fuse in. It fuses. And to be honest, because this was a clearance, the proximal spaces didn't really matter anyway, did they? It's all yeah. going to go in the, in the, in the bin. Um, and then just to show you how easy this is and how nice it is, well, I think it's nice. Again, this is a stretch video. I don't know why it did this. Like, I stretched some of them and not the others. <laughs> this is just to show you how beautifully it goes back together. Back together. Love can pour out. See, it locates beautifully. This is where sticky wax comes in use. Well, how nice is that? It's just, it's, it's precision. And this is, this is the case. You can see the silicon bonded to the silicon. It's just went back together. Yeah. Not that it really mattered because they're all coming out. Um, so there we go. That's loose teeth. With 14 minutes of chat, guys. Oh. So oh. I've, got some, I've got something for you. For me? With okay. this, this technique is then, where are you for, I know we're talking primaries today, but where are you for secondaries with the two part trays? I know Finley does a lot of them, like the posterior, right. bi bilateral free and saddle, Zoe, second stage with alginate over the top, joins it in. Where are you at with those? I don't do secondaries because this one, I think, I don't think Finley not does for, not, not for an immediate, sorry, but just for like, you know, bilateral free and saddle. Um, like I would just, case. I'd just take a single impression. I would, I would mm -hmm. green stick the saddles on the lower to get soft tissue compression, a bit like Applegate and the mm -hmm. Apple cast technique when they used to put something under yep. the saddles. Yep. All my second impressions, I, I green stick, and I think I've done Instagrams on this fairly recently. I'll green stick the saddle to simulate soft tissue compression in the tray. Mm -hmm. So when you take the impression proper, the outlet almost gets completely displaced on those free end saddles mm -hmm. anyway. It's, 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 it works. And that's the only way I, I don't bother with two-part impressions. I think the risk of them going back to get Finley's technician Rowan is a genius. He's, he's next door. He's literally four paces. You go out the, out the surgery into his lab and there it's his bang and it's going to be poured up straight away. So he's yeah. got complete control. I just think if you, and you can trust Rowan to put it back together. I think if you're trying to take these two parts, I don't know. I just, I don't, I don't feel the need personally. Mm -hmm. I've not got bitten on the backside yet by not doing it. And the bottom line is if you get away with something long enough, um, and you're getting results, you have to get results, <laughs> carry on doing it. So um, I don't want the complication of two part trays. Yeah, you could miss mm -hmm. alignment. Um, yeah, maybe I haven't done, done them either, but I've just seen Spin yeah. doing them. And they, it looks they, clever, they look doesn't awesome. it? It's, it looks clever, yeah. but I think I spend more time, I think, with the palette because I'm not relying on, a, on a, a special technique for the secondary. I just make sure the primary is good enough. The tray is going to fit really nicely in the palette. Um, mm -hmm. I ought to go back and revisit Finley's site and on that as well. I mean, he's given it his chats before, and I can't remember quite why he does it, but yeah. Uh, I've got a question from JT Phone Home. How would it work for a lone standing mobile posterior? Um, you know, would you do a side vent? If it's a lone standing posterior, I would considering just taking it out really if you're, if you're doing it if, if you're doing grabbing, an immediate for i'll be grabbing a forceps uh, to be quite honest yeah yeah if yeah. you're doing it for like a week you know a week's time or next day additional so i'll just take it out yeah exactly i'll do the same if get a better know, impression i mean the reason you're doing this for the, these techniques is because you want to maintain those teeth for as long as you can until you actually fit the immediate with with lone standing posterior teeth yeah don't worry and the guy who has got those two canines aren't opposing because somebody said to me i'll oh, just just take them out or or somebody said, just cut the lower off and stick a magnet on it or something like that. The guy with the two canines that are unopposed, he, can, he, he told me he could eat a steak with what he's got. But the bottom line is there's no way I'm taking out the last tooth in an arch if the patient's never worn a denture before. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If they've got a history of wearing dentures, fine, you take it out. If they've never worn a denture successfully or never had one full stop, you're potentially burning the last bridge that patient had to eat with. So... You just keep, and this is a John Bessler philosophy, he calls it dental theft. You do not take out teeth unless you have to in situations where the periodontal is sound because you may get a better result. You may get a better suction on the upper. But what if you don't? Yeah. What if you make it worse? And what if this guy could eat a steak with two canines unopposed, like one upper right, lower left, 
and then you can, I make him some dentures. So I took the teeth out, so your dentures will be better without them. And you can't eat anything. You know, just stitch the guy up, which I think is well, it's just not the thing to do, is it? So it's not yeah. ideal. Uh, pick... the, the Cornish dentist is using a loose tooth technique next week. So Alan, let us see how that, uh, how oh, that yes. goes on. Um, Send us the Danny, result. Danny Belliolio. So I can't say that. Um, how do you manage flabby ridge in posterior areas? Do you see any posterior things? I've had some scar tissue from um, OAC uh, trauma repairs. That was the closest that I came to anything posteriorly fibrous -y. I've I've seen a couple of in the hospital, not in practice, of some really probably the size of the end of your little finger, flabby tuberosities, almost mm. bigger than you'd expect to see. And my guess is I would I would do the same on reflection if I had to do it nowadays. No, I, I didn't know the technique then. I would probably make a window tray in that respect because you'd probably reliably get into the buccal sulcus and then just inject into it with with some silicon initially. Hold the tray in the pallet, so have a, think, have a, a central rest made in the special tray and inject some, so really squeeze it in, um, zinc oxide the whole thing, cut the window out where you've got the uh, flabby tuberosity, inject light body in it, in, in, inject some um, hydrobite or the like over the top, the blue mousse over the top. Again, same thing, you don't want to displace these tissues, do it. It'd be way more difficult with the back. I wouldn't want to do it, but I think that's what I would do if I had to. Mm -hmm. So that, that I would actually probably genuinely use a window there. Because you, you'd never be able to preserve the buccal sulcus that far back. Yeah, you need to um, capture that. That would be tricky. Definitely be tricky. Um, no, Sarah, I'm not on the mud house tonight. Uh, and have we have we talked about green stick? Yes, we have. So check that out in the recording. It'll go on in a second, um, and you can do. We'll get onto that, or you'll be able to see that in the recording. Uh, have we got any other questions? I miss any. I find when cutting back the trays, the burr gets clogged up with the hot plastic. You got it to be does. Quick. It, it does. Um, you want if you, if you if that's happening, you want a really coarse burr with just some just some slashes. You, the, the the finer the burrs, the more they're going to block. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think you can see the one I use, but it really is a really horribly coarse burr. You wouldn't want to use it anything that went near the patient. Um, just a really coarse burr with with broad flutes, and it won't block. If you if you send me a message, I'll send you a photograph of the one I use. Mm -hmm. um, so message me through Instagram, and I'll send you a photo of the one I, I use. It never clogs because it, it's too big. Got a question? Um, modifying the trays with wax. So I, I guess they're talking the anterior. So, so interesting, you used wax in the palate for the, the mobile. Any particular reason? Just because it was easier than using some compound? I, do, I just want to want to prove to people if you haven't got compound, you can get away with wax. It's a compromise, but it's mm -hmm. it's really quick. It's cheap, and again, it's, if it's not in the right place, you just put some more in. Um, I, I would get really frustrated with with silicon. Not that I use it, that it would. I'd have to wait for the stuff to set. It would drive me nuts. But if you wax, you put it in the mouth to take it out. Impression compound, you put it in your mouth to take it out. So in that respect, it's really quick. I just think a lot of people are intimidated by using impression compound because they think they need hot water with a water bath. And I say to people quite happily, for the first 20 years of my practicing life, I didn't have a water bath. And I've always used impression compound. I just have a kettle dedicated to the surgery so you don't make your tea with it. And you just get kidney dishes, uh, stainless kidney dishes, or you, you can buy, I was looking on eBay the other day, you can buy like seven kidney um, uh, dog bowls, fairly big dog bowls for about 15 pounds. So you can mm -hmm. have one per patient. You tip the hot water in, you put the compound in, wrapped in gauze. Always, if you're going to buy compound, guys, wrap it in gauze, otherwise it sticks to the bowl. And your nurse will get really hacked off with you because it doesn't scrape off very easily, okay? But then if you've got dedicated bowls, you just chuck it through the autoclave. Um, so say for the last five years, I've had a water bath. Prior to that, all I used was, was stainless steel dishes. You buy them from Ikea, you can buy them on eBay. Get a kettle in your surgery, boil it up. Um, you want about 60 degree water. Put the compound in before the patient comes in the room and then it's it's easy you're thinking i've got no excuse not to do it um, um yeah. dr rab dr rab is asking uh, are we using light body silicon on the secondary bit of the window impression so we both do light body silicon so yeah. we're exactly the same there uh, i use putty you use zoe yeah and then yeah so, yeah, so that's that's the thing because you're doing that as a as a second part so because i'm doing the classical window technique just putting the light body is sufficient in that because it forms a seal with the whole thing. Um, 
And then we've had a question, technique used for a patient with extreme gag reflex. So that's, <laughs> that's what you're referring to. <laughs> <laughs> to Bristol University. Um, <laughs> so I use a bit of salt. I get the patient to put a bit of salt on the tip of the tongue. I find that works really well. Uh, make sure they're sat fully upright. Get them really nice and relaxed as best you can. Do you have any other things well, that you use? Fun? We had a massive gagger on Monday with a... Uh... Fourth year student, fourth year student. The guy was never worn dentures, had a clearance. He's got the flattest upper ridge I've ever seen in my life. It almost looks like a dinner plate. It's that flat. Um, and the student was having trouble. And it, it's almost like you don't want to be too timid with this. It sounds awful. It sounds nasty. But if you're too nice to them, they almost gag more. If you're quite forceful and you, maybe the pressure gives them a bit of focus, they focus on that. The other thing the guy was doing, he was he was pushing the pressure point on your chin. You know about that? If you push yep. really hard, yeah, there's, a, there's, a, acu, there's an acu yep. point. Uh, acu you can stick a needle in, but the guy had fairly sharp nails. He was digging that in, and the student watched me do it, and and he said what I was doing, I was just pushing harder. It's almost like the patient was, I don't know, almost trying to help. Um, mm -hmm. So I, the other thing I get them to do is that most patients sit in a chair with their legs crossed, so I get them to uncross their legs, and if they can, raise them up. Mm -hmm. That's quite an abs workout. Do a little circle or you know, yeah, those anything. Kind of just, just, yeah, just. Yeah. But the other the thing I've, from, from Monday, just remind myself don't be too timid with them. And the other thing is, we had a, when I was at UCH in London years ago, there was a really short female um, tutor. She was probably under five foot and she was a terror. And there was a patient gagging across the other side of the clinic. And she saw this student about to take the impression out, taking pity on the patient. The patient, she legged it across the clinic and just shoved it straight back in the patient's mouth. The logic being, if you take it out, one is they've still got a mouthful of alginate or worse still polyether or silicon that's not set. They can't spit it out. And the thing is, they've got to go through it again. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. yeah. You know, it sounds nasty. But You've be, committed be, at that point. Be quite, be quite, if the patient needs the treatment, be quite forceful. Because if you're going to do it again, they can be even more gaggy second time round than first. Um, uh, someone's saying a, a diflam. I've heard that as well, like people doing like a bit of topical, sort of rinsing with topical almost, that can help. Um, that's good. Um, do you do copy dentures? We definitely haven't got time for that. Maybe that can be a second one, Mike. We'll get you back on to chat. I, copy I, dentures. I love, love, love copy dentures in the right scenario, which is not always done in the right, but yeah. Uh, that, let's get you, we'll get you back on for that. So last thing, I, I'm going to nick it from the BDSA because you quite liked it. Okay. Um, if it's you good. could rewind now if you with what's the one thing that you know now that you wish you knew a few years after graduating a little bit different because you had the technician experience before but or what would you want your students to come out with knowing you know that you know now with all your wisdom the bottom line is never ever use a stock tray with nothing on it <laughs> i get so cheesed off with the expression that they get told the students today just take an alginate and you know it's not I mean, you saw right at the beginning, didn't you? Just take it out. It's not going to work. If, if the back of your mind, you know, a stock tray won't fit a patient, just don't do it. Just don't do it. And then, and then you're not going to do what I did when I was a student. You're not going to hope it's going to come out right. Mm -hmm. I mean, my patient students get this drummed in them so much now. I think most of them will agree. And some of them that gets, seriously, they get cheesed off with tutors who say, don't bother modifying a tray. That really yeah. bugs them. So I think if, that's a, if we've got to that point, I've won. They know it works. And the other well, thing is, the other tip, use yeah. a mirror to attract the tissues. Don't use your finger. Mm -hmm. Use a mirror to attract the soft tissues. It's nicer for the patient than your fat finger. <laughs> um, that's it. Well, when I get the uh, the T-shirts made up saying, uh, build an impression, don't take one, I'll be sure to send one down to you. <laughs> <laughs> on the medium, okay? Yeah, perfect. Mike, this has been awesome. We'll do another one on uh, copy dentures and things like that. I'm sure we'll get loads of stuff. So I'll share this in a second on uh, on TV so people can catch up. But uh, cheers, my man, and I'll uh, see you around. It's good fun. Good fun. Cheers, Mike. See you, my students, next week. Bye, guys. Cheers. See you, guys.